एवरी वन वेलकम टू बॉटनी इन साइडर सो इन दिस लेक्चर विल बी डीलिंग विद वन मोर टॉपिक फ्रॉम यूनिट थर्टीन दैट इज द मेथड्स इन बायोलॉजी एंड विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंशियल सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन एंड एट द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो विल बी सॉल्विंग वन प्रीवियस इयर क्वेश्चन फॉर द प्रैक्टिस पर्पज सो नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट दट वॉट इज डिफरेंशियल सेंट्रीफ्यूगेशन एट द फर्स्ट को सो डिफरेंशियल सेंट्रीफिकेशन कुड ऑल्सो बी गिवन द नेम ऑफ द डिफरेंशियल वेलॉसिटी सेंट्रीफिकेशन एंड इट इज अ कॉमन प्रोसीजर इन द बायो केमिस्ट्री एंड द सेल बायोलॉजी विच इज यूज टू सेपरेट द ऑर्गेनलीज एंड द सब सेल्युलर पार्टिकल्स दैट आर बेस्ड अपॉन देयर सेडिमेंटेशन रेट The differential centrifugation works by the stepwise increase in the centrifugation speed. So, in this process, what we are actually trying to do is we are trying to separate out the organelles from the cell that we are focusing upon. We'll take a sample, and in this sample, we would be having many cells present, and this sample is actually. exposed to a very high speed machine and in that machine we would be increasing the velocity of that particular machine in order to separate those organelles that we are focusing upon and the other subcellular particles and this complete separation is mainly based upon the sedimentation rate and this complete process works in a stepwise manner as in when we increase the centrifugation speed the various different types of the subcellular particles and the organelles get separated out and the various organelles that are separated out on those topics only the questions are framed so in this the particles of different densities or the sizes in the suspension will sediment at different rates with the larger and the denser particles sedimenting faster so the particles that are the heaviest and the largest gets sedimented out in the first step and this process continues as and when depending upon the speed and also depending upon the particle size we want these sedimentation rates could be increased by using the centrifugal force so the process is actually using a centrifugation machine and in this centrifugation machine we have many test tubes placed in a circular manner and when this machine is turned on depending upon the speed that we have set we are actually trying to use the centrifugal force so now the suspension of the cell that is subjected to a series of the increasing centrifugal force cycle it will yield a series of the pellets that contain the cells of the decreasing sedimentation rate so what it is saying so the sample that we have contained in the initial step and after the second step what happens is that we have some particles or some of the organelles being settled down at the bottom and some of it must be flowing upwards so the particle that have been settled down is given the name of pellet and the sample that is flowing above is given the name of supernatant so in every cycle the supernatant is used and the pellet is extracted out this supernatant is transferred to the next test tube and as in when the final step arrives we would stop changing the test tubes and we would have the all the organelles separated out depending upon the sedimentation rate and also depending upon their densities so this is the complete process of the differential centrifugation so what is differential centrifugation so we have just understood that the repeated centrifugation at the progressive higher speed will fractionate the cell homogenates into their components so what are the components of a cell we have already discussed about the same in the basics of cell in which we studied about that there are various cellular organelles present i'll put the links of the same video in the description box if you have not watched please do watch that for the better understanding about the components of the cell the centrifugation separates the cell components depending upon their size and density the larger and the denser components experience a greater centrifugal force and they move the most rapidly they sediment to form a pellet at the bottom 
bottom of the tube while the smaller and the less denser components remain in the suspension above which are called as the supernatant so we have just discussed about that what is a supernatant and what is a pallet so now let's try to understand about this process so in the first step we have the cell homogenate which is we have a mixture of a sample which contains various components of the cell and now we want to differentiate or we want to separate out the various components together in the first step we would use the slow speed centrifugation in which we have the first pallet as a result in which we would be having the whole cells the nuclei and the cytoskeletons removed out in the first step and then the supernatant which is the extract which we want for the next step in this we would be having the medium speed centrifugation so now after the second step we would have the mitochondria the lysosomes and the peroxisomes removed out and the same process continues that is we will take the supernatant and it would be exposed to a more high speed centrifugation and now we would have in the third pellet the microsomes and the small vesicles and in the final step the supernatant is again taken and we would be exposing it to a very high speed of centrifugation and we would have the final pellet with the ribosomes viruses and the large macromolecules make sure you remember about that at which stage or at which step we are having which organelles removed out in the first pellet that is in the first step we would be having the whole cells the nuclei and the cytoskeleton in the second pellet we would be having the mitochondria lysosomes and the peroxisome in the third pellet we would be having the microsomes and the small vesicles and in the fourth pellet at last we would be having the ribosomes the viruses and the larger macromolecules questions have been framed from this area many times so make sure you remember about this make some mnemonics and you'll be good to go for learning these points so the lower cells at the beginning are used to eliminate the heavier food particles or the particles or the any organelles that we are focusing upon and as the speed increases until the target themselves are pelleted the simplest form of the separation by the centrifugation is the differential centrifugation which is also sometimes called as the differential pelleting so we have discussed that differential centrifugation can be called as either the differential pelleting or it could also be called as differential velocity centrifugation so we have just discussed about the same in the subsequent slides only so just let's just go through it so the particles of the different densities and the size will sediment at different rates with the largest and the most dense are sedimenting at the fastest and at the first step or at the subsequent steps the differential pelleting is commonly used for harvesting the cells or producing crude subcellular fractions from the tissue homogenate for example a rat liver homogenate that contains the nuclei the mitochondria and all the other organelles that are centrifuged at a lower speed for a short time will pellet mainly the larger and the more dense nuclei because low speed and short time would pellet out the largest material that is initially present so in this case we had the nuclei being the most dense particle hence it gets pelleted out at the first step itself so the subsequent centrifugation at the higher centrifugal force will pellet the particles the next lower order of size that is the mitochondria and so on as we have just dis discussed as we have just discussed differential centrifugation have one disadvantage that is the contamination is a bit more in case of differential centrifugation and also there occurs less or poor recoveries contamination by the different particle types can be addressed by resuspension and repeating the centrifugation steps that is if we want to remove out the contamination what we can do is we could repeat the centrifugation step by by washing the pellet again. and then again it is unusual to see more than four different centrifugation cycles for a normal tissue homogenate that is it is very rare that more than four cycles would be followed for the same 
so this is how the complete process looks like we have just discussed let's just quickly go through the speed at which the particular process occurs so in the first step we have the suspension of the broken cell that contain the subcellular component it is centrifuged at 800 for 10 minutes and after that we have the nucleus getting sedimented at the first step then the speed is increased to 1500 g for 10 minutes then we get the mitochondria the lysosomes sediments after that we again increase the speed to 1 lakh g for 1 hour that is 60 minutes and in this the supernatant is centrifuged as we have just discussed and what is the supernatant so in a test tube the material that have been extracted out is known as the pellet and the suspension above is given the name of the supernatant after that we have the fragments of the plasma membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum sediments and finally we centrifuge it at 2 lakh g for 3 hours in which we have the ribosome sediments and finally we would be having the cytosol so make sure you remember about these speeds also because question was framed in a combination of that what was the speed and which particular organelle was produced this is the simplest diagram possible these are from my notes itself so we have the differential centrifugation which is also given the name of subcellular fractionation we filter the homogeneity to remove the clumps of the unbroken cells and the connective tissue and this we have the filtered homogeneity it is first moved at 600 g for 10 minutes in which we would be having the nuclei being sedimented out and then we would be pouring out the supernatant and then the there occurs the centrifugation at 15000 g for 5 minutes do not worry about the actual timing because it differs in different books just make sure you have a range of the timing and the range of the speed at which that particular work is occurring in this we would be having the lysosome chloroplast mitochondria and the peroxisomes being sedimenting out then it is again centrifuged at 1 lakh g for 60 minutes then we would be having plasma membrane and the microsome fractions after that it is poured out and we are centrifuging at 3 lakh g for 2 hours in which we would be having the ribosomal subunits and the small polyribosomes and finally the poured out material contains the cytoplasm or the cytosol so this was all about the complete differential centrifugation let's just quickly solve this particular question so the question says that a researcher is studying the subcellular localization of a particular protein x in an animal cell the researcher performs the successive centrifugation at increasing the rotor speed the researcher starts to spin the cellular homogeneity at 600 for 10 minutes and then it goes on to the 10000 for 20 minutes so the second step is at 10000 g for 20 minutes the, it collects the pellets and it spins the supernatant at at 1 lakh g so after 10000 we are doing the centrifugation at 1 lakh g for 1 hour and then it collects both the pellet and the final supernatant on subjecting the various pellets and the final supernatant to western blotting with the antibody x the protein x is observed to be maximally expressed in the pellet after being centrifuged at 10000 g based upon these observation what will be the most likely localization of the protein x so in this what the researcher is actually doing is he is actually performing the differential centrifugation in order to understand that the protein x in order to understand that where this protein x is localized so after the complete process what he observes is that after 10000 g the protein is expressed at the maximum level so we need to find out that in which organelle this particular protein would be present so it is a very simple question so it is saying that after 10000 g so as we have discussed that after 10000 g so i have just told you that do not go for the exact digits so it is saying 10000 so which is almost near to 15000 so in the second step we have the lysosomes chloroplast mitochondria and the peroxisomes being removed out that is lysosomes mitochondria peroxisomes and the chloroplast 
So let's just quickly go through the option. So we have the nucleus, which is an incorrect statement because the nucleus is the first organelle to be removed out. Then we have ribosomes. No, it gets removed out at step number three. And then we have microsomes, which is also incorrect because they are also removed out in the last steps. So the correct answer for this particular question is mitochondria. Why? Because after 10,000 or after 15,000 G step, we have the lysosomes, chloroplast, mitochondria and the peroxisomes being sedimenting out. And out of the four, we have only mitochondria seen in this particular option. Hence, C is the correct answer for this particular question. And with this, we are done with the complete topic of differential centrifugation and also a PYQ in detail. I hope this video was helpful for you and if you like this video please do like share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel i'll be coming up very soon with more informative videos so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye